It's hard. It is rock hard, and I appear to be dead. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Right, this is Blagger by Alligator Software. Um, there was a screen a moment ago that told us what the controls were, but it was there and gone so quickly that I didn't get to make a note of what the controls were. So this will be fun. How do we start? I don't know. Okay, Z and X do that. Um, can I jump? Please tell me I can jump. Yes, I can jump. So, um, alligator software. I have met the... Oh, crap. Don't run into the funny bushes or whatever they are, because they'll kill you. Um, this was programmed by a guy called Mike Mahoney, who I had the pleasure of meeting quite a few... Well, it was about ten years ago. Uh, he was interviewing me for a job. I didn't get the job, <laughs> which was a shame. But uh, he, he, was, he was proud of this game, and I can see why. He also programmed... Um, there's a Defender clone on the BBC and Electron um, Guardian, which I'm going to have a look at at some point. Uh, I sort of know what I've got to do here. I've got to get these here keys and then get to that safe. Uh, it's not easy. Um, so, oh dear. How far can I fall before I die? Don't know. Okay, I'm still alive. That's good. So I've got to get back up there. Up. It's, it's not just a platform game. It's very much a thinking platform game. So obviously I'm not going to do well. Um, not looking forward to bumping into that there. Well... It's, it's one of those like railway things where you push the levers up and down and make you know, it, it just looked like a demented roller skate to me. Crap. This isn't going to go well. Oh, 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 crap. Go. Oh, God. There. Oh, God. Well, that's a shame. And we start all over again. Yay. What the hell is with the, the D's up here? What happens there? That's kind of nightmarish. It is... Oh, okay. You can't fall that far. Otherwise you die. Right. Reacquainting myself with the keys because I took my hands off the keyboard and it's like as soon as you do that, if you're... Oops, if you're me, you forget what the keys are. Oh, for goodness sake. It's hard. It is rock hard, and I appear to be dead. We'll start again. Please don't die. I like that. It's, it's a cute little animation. Don't die. He died. Ass. <sighs> okay. This, I mean, it's... 8-bit platform games back in the day were notorious for needing to be pixel perfect. Or, or the, What? Why? Why did I die when that happened? Ah, I've got to get that key first. Is that it? Damn. Oops. Oh, God, I thought I was going to die then. Oh, oh, come on. Sometimes I think it's a bit unfair, if I'm honest. You appear to die for no obvious reason.
I mean, smacking your face into a wall might be a reason, I don't know, but... I've walked into the old wall every now and then and not died, so it, it seems kind of unfair that you... Don't die. Thank you for not dying. I'm very considerate. Come on. Up, 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 up. And off we go. So... Alright. We'll wait for that to go. Get down here. Oh, you bugger. That didn't work. Oh, and we've got to do it all over again. <laughs> We'll have another go. It is compelling. It's it's rock hard and very much gonna be oh a memory test. Now I'm gonna die, aren't I? Yeah, I died. Bugger. Memory test. It's like remember every little bit that you did. And then be pixel perfect. Get that key. <sighs> Fall down here. Why? Why did I die? That's bullshit. Mm. We'll have one more go. Then I'm calling it quits. Because... Ah, I didn't want to do that. That was stupid. Now I'm going to fall in the bush and die. Oh, oh bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, 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 that's it. That is Blagger by Alligator Software. Rock hard multi-screen platform game. Um... On the Acorn Electron, uh, it, it, I think it's a good game. I think I suck at it. I think it would take a lot of practice to get good at it. It's something that I just don't have time to do. I, I like the graphics. I like that it's very colourful, which Electron games often aren't. They're often... I think it's because it's in a fairly low resolution. It's like the, the higher res you get, the fewer colours you get, and all of that. Um, but it's nice and bright and colourful and there's lots of movement and stuff and I have no idea what that geezer's doing there. Hmm. Okay, thank you for watching. Hello. Today's question for Q&A is from 911 Gamer. Link to his channel down there. He asks, For Q&A, if you could take credit for being the creator of any retro game, what would it be? I'd probably go with UFO slash XCOM Enemy Unknown on the Amiga. I had to think about this. Um, honestly, I would like to be able to take credit for any video game, and it could be the crappiest thing at all, just, just to say, hey, I made a game, because... I can't program for toffee. I just, I've tried. I, um, it took me, oh, I tried learning Blitz Basic on the Amiga. I mean, the first time I tried programming, and it's all, almost always been basic, uh, ZX81, I tried a bit of Sinclair Basic on that. I tried a little bit of uh, Atari, whatever the basic was on the Atari 600XL. I mean, I, I had a book, you know, learn how to program in basic kind of book um, and I, I was I basically I could type out what they'd put in there and sort of learn how the various commands worked and what they did but actually coming up with my own programs that could do anything useful at a useful kind of speed I was rubbish I tried learning blitz basic on the Amiga and it probably took me a whole afternoon to learn just how to open a system window I mean I wasn't even trying to learn how to make a game at that point I was trying to work with the operating system 
and open a system window and have it count to a certain period of time and then close the window. But the, I could make it do that, but while it was doing that, it wouldn't do anything else. It wouldn't multitask. It used the entirety of the processor time in counting the seconds that I wanted the window to stay open. Um, and then closed it and it was like, anything else, forget it, it wasn't going to work. And the only way to stop it was basically Vulcan death grip and control Amiga Amiga and make it shut down or, or just pull the plug. Um, so yeah, I kind of gave up at that point. And then when I was doing my Open University course, before I started doing the photography, um, One of the courses I was doing was IT. I was doing IT and design as a degree. And I got to the second year and I chose programming. And the programming language I chose was a very bad choice. It turns out I, I thought i will program in Java because Java is what they use on Android devices, I believe. Um, and I learned quite quickly that Java was way, way, way over my head. Um, I mean, with hindsight, I should have known that. If I couldn't do a decent job with BASIC, no bloody way was I going to do anything useful with Java. I, I just kind of figured, well, with professional teaching and whatnot, I should be able to learn rather than teaching myself. Uh, just totally, my brain exploded trying to... It was something about a function here and a function here and they exchange values or something in a way that just boggled my brain and I, I couldn't. I just could not grasp the way values were exchanged and, and responses to those values happened and stuff. It, oh, God. it seemed absolutely illogical and mental and horrible and I hated it and I didn't, I didn't keep doing that for very long. Yep. So uh, programming, not my thing. So if and um, by take credit for a game, I mean I wouldn't want to take credit for anyone's work, but if I could happen to be the person who programmed a, a retro game at some point in history, what would that game be? 3D Monster Maze on the ZX81. That game. I just remember how it blew me away the very first time I saw it. And I've played a lot of games that blow me away. Um, I'm currently blown away by Skyrim on the PS4, even though it's basically visually not greatly enhanced over the PS3 version, but it, it's the depth of the gameplay and the characterization and the, uh, the bizarre random moments like disintegrating a goat by accident. And, and killing a mud crab and then having a chicken just sit on it and peck at it, it blows my mind. And that's like current gaming. But back in the day, 3D Monster Maze, maze utterly, I, I just remember thinking, holy crap, this is fantastic. Partly it was because it was first person. It was my first experience of as near as you were going to get a virtual world. Here you were, obviously it's represented on a screen and not on a, like a headset, but you know, a, a three-dimensional space that you can walk through and you can turn around and see what's to your left and your right and behind you and you're not alone and this thing is trying to kill you. <laughs> uh, and just the fact that it worked at a playable speed on something so utterly weedy with such utterly rubbish graphics. I mean, the ZX81 graphics are abysmal. They're, they're, there is no high-res anything about them, just big black and white blocks. Um, and with all of that, all of those limitations, here was a fantastic game. And it wasn't just like a clever tech demo. It Fear. It created fear in the player, or at least it got your heart racing. You knew that thing was behind you and you've got to get away and, and 
just the, the first time I, it's probably the first game I've ever played on a home system that was like really got my heart pumping and and you know it gives you a sense of panic um yeah if I could have made any game and and take credit for a game that one would be it there there have been obviously better technically more technically advanced games since then like yeah even back then there were surely more technically advanced games but that was the one that in terms of an impressive programming feat to make a really great game that still stands up well today that game is still fun to play um, I wish I'd made that game mm. okay that's that's about all I've got to say about that anyone else who's got any questions they would like answering in a video like this leave your question in the comments below and begin with for Q and A, so I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. So look, just subscribe to this Benway chap, and we can all go home. I'll have a glass of claret and uh, uh bollocks. <laughs>